Hi, everyone. Welcome to Soda Series Live. I'm Kristen Bell from the Strategic Development Team here at Adobe, and I have the privilege of working with Soda, the Society of Digital Agencies, and their incredible member organizations, one of which you'll get to hear from today. Soda Series Live is one of our collaborations that we do where we bring you candid, in-depth discussions with creative and agency leaders from all around the world. Our goal is just to share with you some of their experiences and incredible insights um, to help either inspire or um, just support you along your own personal journey. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, I'd love to introduce Talon Wadsworth, who, hey Talon. Hi, Kristen. Talon is our amazing partner um, from the Adobe design team who helps us lead these incredible conversations. So um, thank you, Talon, for your amazing partnership. Oh, always my pleasure, always. Kristen. Do you want to share a little bit about what your role is at Adobe? Just to kick yeah, off. Yeah, so as a principal designer here, I work on a lot of new and emerging projects and technologies. Um, and I get to sort of uh, get to get out there and talk to the community. So a lot of my role as well as sort of being out there talking to the community, like here, partnering with you and Tom and Soda uh, and talking to these amazing individuals. And uh, again, you really get to take that back and be a conduit uh, from Adobe to the community. And uh, yeah, I just get to work with a lot of really talented, amazing people all the time. So yeah. it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty great. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and yeah, shout out to Tom, Tom Beck, who's enjoying spring break right now. He is executive director of Soda and usually, um, another partner uh, in this initiative with us. So um, yeah. Hope he's on a beach somewhere. He, uh, let's hope, or skiing, I'm not sure. <laughs> or skiing, um, yeah, skiing too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equally good. So uh, today we have the honor of speaking with Flo. I'm gonna spare you all my botching his full name, um, who is the founder. Hey, Flo. Hey there. <laughs> Uh, Flo graciously said, just, you know, don't even try. It's all good. Um, <laughs> so Flo is founder and CEO of Borbora Studios and um, joining us from Barcelona. Borbora is an incredible, um, and Flo will give you much more information, but an incredible um, experiential shop and um, do some amazing work. You can check out their uh, site, BoraBoraStudios.com um, and see some examples of their incredible work. So um, in, I'm going to let you two take the conversation from here, but just a quick shout out to anybody who is joining us live in the LinkedIn chat. I will be joining you there and um, momentarily and feel free to drop any questions uh, that you have for either Flo or Talon at any point during the conversation today. And I will do my best to surface as many of those as possible for you. And um, so Talon and Flo, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Kristen. Flo, it's great to see you again. I was so excited uh, to, first to meet you for the first time a, a number of weeks ago, and now really, really was looking forward to our conversation. Thanks for joining us there in your evening, taking some of the time there in your evening there in Barcelona. Yes, thank you, thank you. Looking yeah, well, well, great. Well, I'll go ahead. Sorry. No, I'll go looking forward. Looking All forward. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're Barcelona, man. I love that city. I've only been there briefly, but uh, good choice. Uh, <laughs> but excellent. Well, I always like to kind of start uh, again. Again, we have a lot of people joining us from all over the world, you know, experienced designers, you know, people who are just getting started. But I always love to start with kind of like give us a little bit about your journey so far. Like, how did you kind of you know give us kind of the broad strokes of like your kind of journey to you know becoming kind of the you know the the, the founder of Bora Bora Studios and kind of what the creative sort of stops along the way have been. Sure, sure thing. So first off, uh, I'm Flo. I usually don't say my surname because it's uh, it's totally non non uh, speakable. So I usually just everybody knows me as Flo. Uh, I'm, um, I was born in, in, in Austria, uh, I grew up in, in Southeast Asia, uh, traveled around uh, the world with my family when I was younger, which, which was pretty cool, that gave me a, a you know, good, good picture of, uh, of the world. Um, um, and then after, after college and stuff, I was in a passion for technology design, uh, so started you know started early on with uh, with websites. Uh, I think even before coding on an uh, Amiga 500. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, oh, yeah, first 56k modem was like, okay, this is this is connecting me to the world. So it's like always oh, like really really in there. Um, obviously, here Adobe Flash or Macromedia was before uh, early early <laughs> early early days. Um, then then growing up, uh, you know, joining a couple of big agencies, network agencies, uh, smaller shops, um, 
before Bora Bora, I was 10 years uh, with, another, with another studio, D Modern, uh, where I was tech director and basically grew, grew that from five people to nearly around 100 people. And um, so three years ago, basically, I was like, okay, cool. I need a, I need a, a change, I need a fresh, fresh air, a new wind. Um, and actually, I didn't want to found a studio at first, to be honest. I was actually just like, oh, maybe something new. Talked to a couple of chaps. Uh, uh, I think all of them are, are also uh, soda soda agency members to basically join their agencies. But then this um, this little uh, event happened uh, three years ago, which made it hard to travel across the world. So I was basically I was basically a little bit stuck uh, in, in in Cologne, Germany, where I was living at the time. And I was like, okay, cool, maybe. Let's uh, let's just you know open up uh, an own an own studio and uh, you know bring bring the world to Cologne and then bring me to the world later on and um, fast forwarding uh, three years um, and I'm in, uh, in Barcelona right now uh, we've got uh, twelve people in uh, in in Cologne eight eight people in uh, in Barcelona and it's uh, it's been a it's been a wild ride the last three years but a, but a but a fun ride. I know for us all, and, you know, it's so fascinating. Sort of, there are a couple things in there. I just want to sort of like tease on, tease out for a minute, like because you know, I think you and I have share a very similar experience, having sort of come up in like the early age of the internet. Um, you know, kind of hacking around that kind of hello world sort of nature, you know, of that time, as well as you know, experience with Flash and like how the how did you feel that influence kind of your trajectory and the ability to communicate that scale and to be dabbling in a space where at the time like there weren't a lot of people or a lot there weren't even a lot of conventions on like this is correct or this is right like it was really the wild west in a lot of ways um mm -hmm. forgive the metaphor you know <laughs> being an american here um, but uh but yeah talk about maybe how that influenced kind of you and your trajectory yeah, I, mean, I remember the, in, the, in the early days, I mean, obviously you were basically alone more or less. And it was like, yeah. do you do design, do you do coding, do you do motion design? It's basically, you know, you kind of do everything because you're like a one man, a one man uh, shop. But you like fairly early, I realized, well, if I want to, you know, put, put out, put stuff out there, I need to, you know, code because that's like the end of the, the production line. So having a great idea, yeah. that's, that's cool. Designing it also cool, but you basically have to bring it out there. And I remember the first couple of years, I haven't thought about this for a long time, but I remember the first couple of years, yeah. when it was still like the, the 56K modem times, there were a couple of uh, communities. Um, what was one called? I think the one was Pixel Ring or so, I'm not, not quite sure. Mm -hmm. But it was basically it was basically a network of, of websites. And before you launched the website, it was like a splash screen, and it always showed another website which you could link to. It was just like this, yeah. this, collect, this, this, this collective of, 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 of websites. And then like, uh, oh, let's create splash screens of your, of your own things. And then people started doing, I remember there was like Photoshop battles. It's like you, you, you do one image, and then you send it to one guy in the network, and he basically is like, yeah, I will take this. And then he does something totally weird, he sends it back to you, and you basically have a, have a, like a Photoshop uh, image battle uh, going, going in really weird directions. Um, yeah, this is like when, when you, like back in the days, this is basically what I'm yeah. Photoshop battles. I'm I love that. No, I, that definitely resonates with me. And you know, I think you know, we share a very similar trajectory. And I think there's something really interesting in what you were saying about having to do it all, that in a way, like you were sort of in control of the means of production, as it were, right? And, and as a designer, like, I mean, that's why I gravitated towards both the early web and flash, but also, you know, sort of why I love print, right? To sort of be able to, you know, as a designer kind of control that whole process from, from early concept and ideation, like all the way through to production and just sort of the satisfaction it gave you and the, and the ways in which you were learning and problem solving along that whole chain. And you think that sort of influences you still today in the work that you're doing and, and the way that you sort of set up Bora Bora? Yeah, most 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 definitely. Um, I, I guess it's not only this, but it's also like how you like the, the experiences you have in your early agency days, the experiences you have yeah. later. Um, like more, we're I think I, I didn't even mention where our core, like what what we do, such so as like to give. Yeah, let's take a little. Let's put it on that one. Let's start. Let's go there. I, I want to get there. So yeah, <laughs> give us a little. Give us a little sort of summary of Bora Bora. Tell us a little bit yeah. about the studio. Yes. So, so, yes. So, so <laughs> just, it's it's there's like a, a context. Basically, like we're, we're not a web shop. Uh, like we talk a lot about web, but we're like not yeah. a web shop. We're uh, we're uh, um, an experiential studio creating experiences uh, in 
uh, in, the, in, in real life, uh, in museums, uh, pop-up spaces, in retail, uh, but also make basically bring, bringing uh, uh, digital experiences and merging them uh, in the in the in the physical world. Uh, right now, or in general, like we do think branded games or gaming in general is like a big driver. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Everything we try to do, it's like we try to bring in a gamification or actually a, a game factor uh, into it, yeah. and, and try to, to bring basically the this internet feeling we, we had in the just like in the online worlds, basically bring it to the real life um, and make make magic uh, happen there. So this is basically you know, coming from the web right now. Obviously, you cannot not do the web, um, but like a, a strong focus is like you just said, print. You know, this is like uh, in real life. And we basically try to create things in real life as well, and yeah. like pushing it, pushing it out of the screen um, um, into into public spaces. So that's basically where, uh, where, yeah, where we have fun and and, and you know try to push push the boundaries. Yeah, I mean, and I, I mean, I that resonates with me because I, you know, I think that the point I was trying to make, I think before we, I, I you know, didn't give you a chance to sort of introduce the studio properly was really talking about that kind of experimental kind of approach, right? The, the ways in which you are, you know, whether it, you know, in the early days, your early experiences on the web, you know, all the way now through to, you know, bringing these new and interactive and digital experiences like to the physical world. And, and the, the unifying sort of theme in there to me is really one of problem solving. It's like, we have a vision we're trying to execute on either our own or for, you know, with along in partnership with the client and there's no straight path. You know, there's no agreed upon like sort of, you know, pattern right here in this space. And so it really comes down to kind of experimentation and sort of, you know, the knowledge and sort of an immersion, you know, in technology um, and in, you know, in human and, you know, human, human experiences, you know, that to me, uh, you know, it's sort of seeing that line and that, that approach, right? So t talk about a little bit about, about the approach of like you designing experiences that maybe you know, again, like aren't cookie cutter. They're not, you can't just sort of open up a box and be like, well, here's a great experience, you know? So talk well, about think, that, like how that still sort of infuses your work today. Yeah, I think I think at the, at the very beginning when I was uh, when I was still alone, it was basically uh, look at what's out there, if there's anything out there uh, and trying to basically copy it. So it's like, wow, this looks, this is so amazing. How did, how did they, how did he, how did they, they do it and basically just like trying to get there. It's like, oh, which tools are they using? Ah, okay. Um, so basically like just like learning by by creating something which was out there and then slowly, obviously, once you build up the skills, you can like, you know, do it, do it, do it yourself. And now uh, fast, fast forward, fast forward uh, with a founded Bora Bora Studios, I was fairly certain um, I I can't do this alone. So like when I, when I founded it, I was like, okay, I definitely need a team of eight people because there are better coders out there. There are better designers out there. There are better people which do IoT, like like, like hardware, PCBs out there. There are uh, yeah. like in many fields, there, there are different people out there which are definitely better than what I can do. And to like really push stuff, I cannot limit myself with, with, uh, with my abilities, I would say. And then basically creating a creating a, a force which pushes which pushes everybody forward and mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah having 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 this, this play field of where I can have ideas and before I was maybe a little bit limited to like mm, the, the skills maybe are not completely there it's like okay now uh, let's just push in this direction let's let's try this out and uh, infusing each other with with, uh, with ideas uh, infusing each other with, with, with skills and I think this is like the this is the thing I, I love, I, I like like most about my job right now. It's are there boundaries? Uh, yes. Can we like push them? Can we can we do mm -hmm. new stuff? Um, that's that's right now. I think this is like the favorite part of my job. It's like ooh, I have an idea. I have no clue how to do it. It's like hey, can we do can we do something in this? How can we do it? And then basically uh, together uh, push uh, push this push this forward. And as you just said. Um, like, like failing, failing often, failing, like mm -hmm. taking, taking failure in as, as part of the process. I mean, this is like, if you design, it's like, you make a scribble, you throw it away, make another scribble, you throw it away. You know, it's like, and like, uh, maybe there's a, a, a scribble the 18th on the floor, you, you, you pick it up later again, you're like, actually, it's, that wasn't too bad, maybe. but like, um, <laughs> but you know, like, uh, um, working with failure, fail, fail, fail often, uh, fail fast, uh, um, that's that's definitely also part of the game that you basically yeah. 
are appreciative of, of not always doing everything right. I mean, this is R&D in the end, right? R&D is about trying something out. How does it work? Does it work? Um, yeah. And, and, you know, taking, like, failure always has, like, this very negative connotation and, and well, sometimes it is negative um but i think in the in the in the in the, in the r d field it really is not it's it's uh if, if i would go out on a on a like three week sprint of doing something at the end obviously after three weeks it's like oh i could recreate this piece in 15 minutes and it seems so obvious but you know you, you needed those three weeks to actually get there to um, get there Exactly. That's that's uh, uh, for me. This is part of the part of the part of the the, the, the joy and the fun. Oh, totally. I you know, and, and I just saying, like, I think it's one of those undertold parts of the story, right? And I think that was something that was you know felt very intimidating when I was you know first first starting out. Is that there were these you know these examples, these you know great designs sort of being held up, and they weren't really telling the story like of those failures or of the processes, you know, like in like. Is it a failure if you learn something? You know, is it a, like what what constitutes a failure in in the in the uh, sort of you know trajectory of like progress, right? Like you tried something, it didn't work, but you learned something, and that influenced the next thing that you made, and on and on and on. You know, um, so how does that like? Do you know, and I think you know ultimately what we're sort of like getting dancing around here is I think what what a lot of people would call prototyping, right? Prototyping as a way as a process, you know, as a practice, you know, to really you know, develop ideas, especially when, again, there's no established pattern, right? Let's so talk about how that kind of infuses, you know, that sort of like dedication to prototyping, how that kind of infuses kind of your work and the, and the broader ethos of the studio. Yeah, we're definitely a, a, a very prototype driven uh, uh, company, which means we, we jump into building stuff fairly early. Like obviously we, we concept, we think, we brainstorm, uh, but we don't brainstorm uh, uh too much so we brainstorm to this point where it's like okay the idea seems solid uh let's like we have the ability to build it you know we have we have coders we have uh, designers let's we have people who build stuff let's uh before we think another four weeks about it how it could be perfect let's let's jump into it then actually see if this feels good if this uh, behaves good if this is just a, a, a an idea in your head or if it actually makes Makes sense in, 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 a, in a physical setting. Um, and then again, there, failing, trying something, and then realizing, well, it, it, it seemed to be a good idea, but then in practice, this, this to totally, this totally, this totally doesn't work. Uh, and then, you know, refining it. Um, and, and this is, this is what I, what I, for me, what I really, again, like about it, like not only having uh, like idea people around, but taking the idea and pushing it into into something which you can touch which you can play around uh, and then learning from it i mean obviously if you do it more and more and more some things you don't have to learn but then usually yeah. in every project there's something uh, it can be as little as and you, you create a new game the game track does it feel good it's like you can paint it or you can basically you know jump into the game engine and see it ah this this is this is good this feels good or this doesn't feel so good so uh, you know like like knowing knowing that that you don't know everything um, and, and pushing that, uh, um, that definitely is, is, is a heavy part of our, uh, of the entire studio. Like we do it like on a, on a daily basis on our own projects, on client projects, on everything. We, you know, we, 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 we jump into, that's always the, the point where you jump into a little bit too early. So it's always like, don't jump into it too early. Like do, what is, what is the end goal? What do we want to achieve? Like, let's focus on exactly this and, uh, and, and, and build it out and see if it actually makes, makes sense. Yeah. Well, I assume, I think, you know, as you're creating these these new experiences or these bespoke experiences, right, you're creating experiences for a physical space, you know, each one's going to present its kind of own problems. So how do you account for, like, that that chance to prototype, like, in your process, you know? Um, how do you staff for something like that? You know, maybe get into a little bit of the more of the mechanics, like, again, like, that's a, a lot of prototyping, in a way, maybe becomes hidden, this hidden work. Right from the client's perspective, like the client wants to just see the end product, and maybe they're not as aware, you know, of those iterative cycles, you know, of that prototyping. So, how do you make it kind of a part of your practice? Well, I mean, and more again, you know, more mechanically. Yeah, I mean, like not not telling the client about it uh, is is probably like we, like we bring the clients onto a journey, like we tell them, hey, this is how we work, uh, this is the process, 
Um, yeah. It also involves you. So do tell us if you don't have like the time or you, you just want every six weeks uh, uh, an image, also okay, tell us. But we would like, you know, come on board and we will tell you what's the state of this. This is like not flushed out. This is like not sexy designed. This is a, a block out, but it's playable. It's doable. You can interact with it and you can get a feel of it. The image is sometimes a little bit dangerous. You usually like, it always depends who you're talking to <clears throat> because some people have more, like you have to onboard, you have to onboard the other side, most definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then it's something, then it's something uh, and clients differently or everybody differently enjoys. So it's not talking about concepts and papers and theoretically doing something, but fairly on in the process. It's like, this is what we're doing, test it out. And it's like, wow, this feels, this already feels magical. This is great. Or, well, it looked super cool on a YouTube video. And it's like, yeah, well, the, you know, the thing you saw on YouTube actually wasn't totally real. It was like post-processed and everything. This is the real deal right now. This is how it feels. You know, so it, it, it can go either, wow, this is great in real life, or in real life, this feels not as good. Um, yeah. And, and we bring the team along, like our entire team um, works. If we're, if we're working on, on digital stuff, if, it doesn't matter if you're in, in, in Unity or in Unreal. Uh, we bring like everybody on board, the concept people, the, the, the 3D artists, the designers, like everybody works on the, same pipe, on the same pipeline. So it's again, not usually it's like very often it's the developers sitting in a, you know, in a dark corner somewhere and they, they have to well do this stuff. And we really try to collaboratively Collabor collaboratively, <laughs> uh, you know, work, 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 work on those things. Um, mm -hmm. To that so everybody is part of, so everybody is part of the end product as well. It's not just like, oh, I, I, you know, I create a super awesome three D model and I pushed it over the wall and something magical happened there. It's like, no, let's let's all work, let's all work on it, let's all iterate on it, and everybody takes takes one area and really pushes this forward. Um, yeah. No, I, I told I mean, what you're saying. I think resonates with me. I think you know prototyping. I, we can you know think about it in terms of like the you know the the tools being used or the outputs, but you know prototyping as a sort of ethos or methodology is a way to align people, as you're saying, like all the way along that process. You know, from setting the expectations with the client to getting them involved in the process to you know everyone who's sort of along that pipeline, like prototyping becomes a tool for alignment, right? We can all see it, we can all put our hands on it, we can all provide feedback. Thus, like the, when we all split off, maybe to go do our individual piece of it, like we're now kind of all armed with this, you know, sort of foundation of knowledge now. And then it sort of, to me, like at the end of the day, like I said, you talked about the building in the time for prototyping, but prototyping probably saves you, you know, some amount of time as well, right? On the other end. I, I mean, I mean, for us, it's, it's, it's um, for client projects, it's, it's like how we how we roll, I would say, um, yeah. and uh, we also like when we do R and D, that's basically also prototyping. And then uh, for us in our in our like I would say spare time, but like we do, we do carve out quite a bit of time on uh, on, on R and D. This is not only tech R and D; it's also like people R and D. If we get new people in, and we we work on a new project, very often it's like you know, we're all humans. You can have perfect processes, but we're like we all remain human beings, and uh, I always see it like at first it takes days, it takes weeks. And then if a team is aligned, you, you feel it. It's like, you know, you don't need as much, I don't know, Trello boards or, 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 or like, what exactly are we doing? Um, like if you get to the state where teams are basically like super aligned, you just need to like a quick checkup. Are we, in the, are we going in the right direction? And like prototyping, everybody working on the same, on the same, on the same product uh, at the same time. That really, you can really see it's like, oh, it's a team. They're super together. They're in the same headspace. And you can always see, like, after three, four projects um, or iterations, it's like, oh, it's it's like, oh, we're flowing. This is like supernatural. We're all moving in the right direction. And at the beginning, it's like, ooh, uh, oh, oh, I'm working. We're both working on the same thing. And it's like a little bit, it's like this, you, you can feel it. It's like, it's like not a real alignment. And that's, that's what I also like about it, that you basically, you know, people align themselves and they get on the same curve. And then it's like uh, an, an easy river ride, uh, an easy, an easy river, river, river ride. It's, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, there was a saying that we had in, you know, because I was part of the 
early team that sort of developed the prototype for XD. And, and one of the reasons why we focused on, you know, prototyping was because we saw the role, you know, of something that people could actually like look at, follow along with, kind of put their hands on, you know, as a tool for alignment. And so the saying that we had early on, which, and I think I cribbed it from somewhere else, I'm not, and forgive me who anyone sort of, you know, the origination of this one, I'll go check my notes later, but uh, you know, a prototype is worth a thousand meetings. You know, that if I can, you know, we can put it in front of you and you can experience it yourself, right? Like we are much closer to alignment than we were, you know, before. Uh, and we skipped probably a bunch of other sort of, you know, back and forth communications that we might have, could have had you know, just to try and get to that same kind of point of alignment, you know? I, 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 told, I couldn't agree more. There, there are meetings which are super important to be like, okay, like let's uh, align on, on the grand vision, let's align on this. But very often I also go, I'll say, hey, Hey guys, girls, everybody in the room, let's just, you know, this doesn't make any sense. Let's put our hands on it, try it, and then decide how we feel. Like deciding on this super theoretical thing doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's just, you know, uh, do it with the with the real with the real thing. And it it yeah. if, even there, I mean there's like this this discussion, the, the, the very big discussion very often still is like in which direction, like swiping, you know? What's the what's the right direction of swiping? Um even like even if it's like on a on a screen, it's like what, what's uh, which like, I obviously have a very, very uh, strong opinion on this. Um but this is like if it's if you're just like on a on a mouse doing it like this, I'm like, no, no, here's the screen, here's the thing, touch it use it and then hopefully we will all agree a little bit a little bit uh easier uh, on, on this yeah and, it, and it's always easier to me i think you to kind of what you're speaking there too where it, it it's always also easier to receive feedback in that way like if you are the, the designer or you are the the engineer and you're you're creating something but you're you're all kind of coming from a point of alignment then it's also easier i think to to receive feedback, right? And to then to, to be open, right? Because now there's a, there's some trust built into this process. You know, if we're we're much more aligned in the approach in the in the you know the technology or in the you know, the design and we're seeing it and experiencing it together, you know, again, we have this foundation. Now it becomes a little more equitable, right? And so now I feel, you know, I feel safer in receiving that feedback and then iterating, you know, collectively you know, together going forward. A hundred, hundred percent, and it's also like it definitely like also on the other side. Like usually, very often, it's 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 like oh, we're doing this right. We're the experts, and of course, we're the experts mm -hmm. because we get paid for it, and we have the knowledge of I don't know, ten years, fifteen years, uh, uh, five years doing this. So like we we don't you know, we should be the experts, but very often it is still sometimes you you build something and you're like this should be this is the, this should be right, but also. You know, very often then the client comes to us like, oh, this, this feels better. It's like, oh, you're totally right. This feels, this definitely feels way better. Let's do it like this. So it's like, it's not, it's not a one-way direction. It's, you know, as you just mentioned, it's like alignment always needs, needs, mm -hmm. you know, not one point, but multiple points, I guess, to, uh, to get there. Totally, totally. I want to go back to something that you mentioned, because I, I, I want to sort of talk, uh, ask you about like how you build this into your process, which you talked about R&D. Uh, both kind of on your personal time, but on, you know, in a way kind of, you know, company time, like how are you building in the opportunity or the space or the time, you know, for R and D, you know, and how does, and what does it mean to you, you know, as a, as a, as a leader and as a studio to have to make sure that's an important sort of part of your practice. Yeah. I, I could now say there's, we've got like a very strict 30% rule on R and D, which, which, <laughs> course, uh, yeah. which, which like, 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 I wouldn't say that. Like, uh, Can't quantify uh, it. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it, it probably hangs, it probably hangs around there. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit lower. Um, sure. but, for, but for me, R and D is, is, is a little bit of a, is a like oh there's a topic this is this is this is coming up this is coming in hot uh it's it's out there maybe people are talking about it maybe they're not yet talking about it so for me r d is like it's like okay what is this what's out there let's again bring it bring it to life test it out and see if it's if it's if it's really awesome or if it's just like a stupid idea which which you know doesn't that doesn't really work um and and we do this like we do this like all the time, constantly. Right now, we have at least five R&D projects. Some may take a little bit longer. Some might involve uh, uh, building custom hardware. Some might involve uh, software. Some might be uh, more design driven. Um, but like this is like this is like what definitely what what, what drives us. Um, 
yeah. uh, forward. And we, um, it's it's not just me saying, "Oh, let's do this." It's it's you know again as as uh, collaboratively. I really don't like this word. I think as in collaboration. <laughs> Let me just yeah, as, no, as, it's a, as, it's a hard one. <laughs> as, as in collaboration, like we do have uh, internally, we have like a big. Uh, want to do board it's a big my report we call it the want to do board uh, and the, the point of the want to do board is uh, people put in there what they want to do um, and this really symbolizes basically like also the direct the direction we're doing I and mean, ideally you know we're a company uh, everybody should have the same the same vision where we're, where we're, where we're going uh, and within this vision people can still like okay what's what's where exactly ah, i want to really i saw this i really want to do this so basically what i try to do i look at the board every week and i'm like interesting okay let's try to get client projects so we can basically you know also get paid for for some of these things uh, some things yeah. might be too experiential like ooh, clients wouldn't go for this this is like this is maybe in three years let's let's you know make an r d project um so basically, you know, it's it's not just me. It's like the team basically also pushing in which directions uh, we're we, we're doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm I love that want to do board. I'm 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 gonna like crib that for my team. So <laughs> really great idea, sort of like capturing that at a high level and getting people's eyes all kind of on that and, and getting and people excited. I think you're right. Like so, you know, one thing maybe to sort of to dig into a little bit more, like. How, have you seen this kind of dedication, you know, to R and D, you know, to prototyping, really impact the culture, you know, there that you're trying to create at Bora Bora, and you know the ways in which people interact with one another, and how it changes, you know, the tenor of the interactions and the collaborations, <laughs> you know, and, and things like that internally, you know, in in the in the team itself. I, I would say most most definitely because everybody is constantly learning. This is like. Like everybody is literally constantly learning in every part. It might be uh, the developer who's like, "Ooh, those cam this camera movements could be a little bit smoother." You know, it's like, "Ooh, I will, I will dive more into into this animation of our cinematographic camera movements." The designer will help him out, but then the developer going back in, and so it's like, like everybody's like mixing together, and the skills rub off on each other, and it's like, mm -hmm. like, like seeing like seeing uh, like this also the skills and the speed that everything progress. It's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, we're basically, as I just mentioned, we're basically learning every day. Like, you know, we, we're, we're really good, but we're definitely not good at everything. Uh, and just like knowing this, it's like, oh, this is, this is, we can tweak it there. We can get better there. Or the individual get better there. And it's like, oh, we've got four people, which are like, ah, oh, really good at, 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 I would just take camera movement, cinematic shots. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yes. Um, that's, 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 uh, that's really fun, and it's that's you know great to watch to like to like see how this is like ever 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 evolving, um, and uh, I mean it, it also doesn't need to be the one team, you know. If everybody is in the same like if this goes across the culture, and we're all like only twenty yeah. people right now, so it might be a four people team here, it might be a completely different five people team here, but everybody works. Ooh, this is the way we work. They all get together um, with the same workflows, and then it's then it's you know it's. Uh, it's it's not stressful and it's not hard work. It's 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 not hard, super crazy hard work if if everybody knows what they're doing. Um, that's mm -hmm. that's basically also one thing uh, uh, you know I want to be doing here. Uh, I want to be working on the right projects with the right people, the right skills for the right project, uh, and then it, it doesn't have to be super crazy because I mean, mm -hmm. the, I mean the agency field or the studio field sometimes. It, mm -hmm. There's like, ooh, let's all be happy. Everything is super great. Uh, let's uh, not work at all. Sometimes it feels like, and then it's like let's the, be productive. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like the, the other is like, oh, let's we have to work. And if you don't work till five o'clock in the morning, it's not real work. It's not real passion. I'm like, wow, yes. <clears throat> uh, every, you know, everybody relax. Uh, there's there's probably there's just truthfulness and everything. Um, what I just found is ideally, if you if you work on the projects where you are good at, with the tools where you're good at, with the people which are you know it's like it's it's not a magic uh, formula, but then usually uh, at six o'clock everybody can can leave the place and have a happy life and not be stressed out. It's uh, it's, it's yeah, it's, actually it's very often as easy as easy as that if you're staying in your comfort zone. Uh, I mean sometimes jumping a little bit out of it. Like we do this all the time, jumping a little bit out of it, uh, but like not jumping completely out of it. 
that definitely mm -hmm. that definitely you know creates and produces stress i guess yeah no for sure i i'm i'm reading a book right now called slow productivity and it's a very provocative title uh but it, i think there's something in there where you're saying where there's this you know, you're you're promoting this this uh this commitment you know to learning you know through r d you know through prototyping and the ways in which that impacts the culture and, and the kind of the thesis of the book is that like you know we've been kind of as knowledge knowledge workers you know designers again like you know creators like we're working you know we're not doing manual labor you know we're sort of all doing it you know trying to be creative all the time that when we put on these structures or these strictures you know of you know quote unquote productivity and like you said you you can't really put a percentage number on how much time for r d but if it's sort of baked into the experience like people are enjoying their work much more and the results you know speak for themselves right like if you're producing work at a high level but you're ensuring that people again are seeing and feeling that commitment you know, to learning then again like it, it's it reaps its own rewards you know in that way most most definitely and i mean sometimes r d it doesn't have to be people always think it's like wow it just needs to be crazy things it can be very very simple things uh as in how can we make life easier when we're like usually if you're at, at events everything is a little bit stressy anyway and if you're at the end of the production line it, it gets it gets even stressier so like how can we do things which just make like we know stuff is gonna not run well how can we like cater for this how can we like optimize everything so if stuff goes wrong or can we like just like make every every process we do faster and you know it can be like simple things like this and um just again it's great it's like oh awesome this is this is working we can like use this on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis and uh you know optimize all our workflows be faster be more productive uh, have high quality fail ideally fail at our time and not fail during an event <laughs> um yes that'd be ideal <laughs> i love it no I, I think that's really interesting um to kind of like kind of maybe get a little bit more back to the kind of mechanical parts of r d and just sort of things you're interested in right now like what what are you experimenting with like where are you like what is what's on your want to do board you know like what are things that you're you're investigating and things that you you are hoping to maybe spend a little more time on or things that will help maybe you, you think it's going to influence your work in the near or maybe long term future like what are some of those things that you're interested in right now and, it's and there, there, there's there, there there's many things i will i will kind of leave the the ai out the ai conversation a little bit out of it obviously it's like one topic uh which which everybody is, is on and uh us as well like how can we incorporate ai on in our pipelines how can we uh make it uh, inside the workflow and out of the workflow uh, uh more effective um but things we're it's it's actually for me very often it's 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 very often this similar topics which we've done in the past for example uh still tracking people tracking body tracking mm -hmm. is like one thing it's been there. there there used to be that the old the old 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 connect that died off there's the the the, mm -hmm. uh, the new connect that died off there's like a new camera so actually it doesn't have to be something super super crazy we're just like trying to, what's out there what's out there let's always keep let's create our own frameworks let's create our own visual frameworks let's create the sensors which are out there let's test the sensors and basically just like staying on top of the curve what's out there sometimes it's things um oh like like products it's like oh we're like we've, we have a, a range of products like we don't sell them as to to like to the public but like internally we have like a, a team which only works on on, on, on sensorics it's like oh i don't want to mm. go too 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 nerdy and techy but uh like rfid readers which which are super easy you don't need computers you don't need you just like plug them in power of ethernet they just work it's like sometimes it's just, just like tiny little things but it's like oh yeah. this event we used we need to set up the computers we need to do this it's like okay stop how can we optimize this it's like oh let's build our own hardware we have uh you know like a box if we have an event we need this we just take it out we just go there and plug it in it all works so it's it's uh sometimes it's hardware based sometimes it's 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 software based sometimes it's a process based it's uh oh we've got we've got a rollout 120 computers how can we like make this not take two days but make this take mm -hmm. like uh, a minute so it's in, in in very different very different areas not just the front and shiny how can we utilize android mm -hmm. 5.4 how can we 
do crazy stuff on, on the new Apple Vision Pro, definitely as well, because different, you know, clients, clients also want to see this, mm -hmm. uh, but also like in the, in the, in the workflow style, like how can we yeah. make our life easier? Can we create tools? Can we utilize tools? Uh, is there a tool out there? I mean, this is also research. Are there tools out there which you can use? Like, mm, but they don't fit or, okay, how about, should we, should we build our own tools? So it's basically, uh, it, it goes in a, in a, in a very, in a very big range. Yeah. I, I love that commitment. I think to thinking through and, and experimenting and learning throughout that whole process, right? That there, yeah, there is the problem of the, the technology and the hardware and kind of all the sort of production of the thing. And then there's, well, how do we just make our quality of life better? You know, in doing the things that we want to do, right? I, I don't want to. I don't want to bring in uh, uh, any 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 Elon Musk conversations here. But it's like what? <laughs> it's like, like oh, but like oh. But there's like there's like there's like one 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 or two quotes uh, I, I like about uh, about what he said. He's like you always said, like building the car, like building the machine is not the it's not the hard part. Building the machine, which builds the machine, that's the really hard part. And that's that's uh, that's you know, like having a workflow which is which is super good and easy so we can, you know, so everything is, is easy flowing and you can like, you know, push out, push out more quality stuff. I think this is like the, um, the stuff you can, you know, R and D as well. So not just R and D the end product, but R and D in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Designing the team, you know, there's a, there was, you know, there's of course many books written and a great podcast series on, you know, again, not to, again, I was sort of talking about, you know, in the slow productivity book is really, you know, contrasting knowledge work versus sort of the sort of, you know, manual production work of the past. But like, I remember, you know, hearing this podcast on uh, the, you know, the, the Japanese method of car manufacturing, you know, and again, yes, there's the, there's the end product, there's the car that is produced, but, you know, their commitment to everyone along that chain, you know, as a, as a person, as a human being, and going directly to them and saying, well, you're the expert here. Tell us how we can do this better. Like we're here, there's someone here who's committed to making your job easier, uh, to make your output at a higher quality that, you know, that, that we know that every one person along that path wants to do their best work. Okay. How do we help them do their best work? You know? And I think, again, like in the, I think that sort of in, in what Musk I think was kind of saying in that, in that quote that you were kind of referencing, but again, I think it goes even further back to this commitment to craft, right. And part of craft is process and part of, you know, craft is alignment. And part of that is trust, you know, especially when you're working on these complex projects, they require that all this expertise of all these amazing people, you know? That's that's actually a good point you're making with, with craft because uh, obviously right now everybody's going like, ooh, AI will take over everything. And again, I'm not jumping into the AI conversation because it's everywhere, uh, but craftsmanship, um, like the when the Apple Vision Pro was released, usually Apple was like super just design the product. Everything is just magically created. And with the Apple Vision Pro, they're, they're their uh, their teaser video or actually their, their their making off video was this is craftsmanship this is like not just created magically it's like no there are machines there is craftsmanship this is actually being built in the real world which I mean Apple never did this they always like said yes this is like built out of an aluminium thing but they always had like these fake shots it's like the first one's like this is a this is a this is a factory we are building this and this is like carved out of here the glass this is all like precision engineering this is manufacturing it's 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 craftsmanship and um mm -hmm. like there's this trend going away from humans and craftsmanship but i think at the same time mm -hmm. the it's it's even more coming back at the same time i think um, yeah yeah it, it, i think it, yeah i agree with you i think it's been a a movement for i you know maybe 10 15 years right so the artisanal movement the bespoke movement that there there is this attraction i think that people have naturally like to something that is well done or well made and you know when everything starts to sort of be sort of reduced to this sort of bar of quality again i you know we'll lead the ai conversations to those people who are much more excited and, and and interested in talking about it but but like when things are reduced down to a level of you know mass production you know like you know, we as people like i think we feel it you know like even consciously subconsciously like there there is like i remember going to japan for the first time 
and again that sort of commitment to the you know the craftsman being valued within society and valued within the culture uh you know was present that the the, the, the output then you could just feel the level of quality and craftsmanship you know in every little detail you know whether it was you know bricklaying or it was you know the highest end sort of you know uh digital you know or you know like physical product design like through the whole chain like there was commitment to to the craftsman most, you know, most, in that in that culture and society most definitely and and I don't want to go too much down the craftsman's route but uh as you're just saying it because i saw this video of i mean there have been like this cocktail ai they look at you and they mix a cocktail thing. It was like, wow. And fuck, like if, if I go out in the evening, I first like their favorite Italian place. It's like Napolitana. It's like they, they make everything with like with fluff. And they like, you want a table? It's like, nope, I want to sit right there, like in the open kitchen, you know, drink my glass of, of red wine and basically just watch them do their thing and the same thing in a, in a in a cocktail bar i go to the bar right a little bit too early so it's kind of empty you know to talk to the talk to the to the uh, to the mixer it's like okay this is this is part of the experience and um yeah um i think yeah craftsmanship i think it's 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 it, it will definitely definitely stay there is no way this will just like vanish away i don't think it's going to happen i think as you just said i think it's actually even going to be increasing in increasing in some areas, some in some areas it will, well, it will vanish. <laughs> in some other areas, it will be, it will, it will increase. I think. Yeah. Well, you know, there's I you know, just sort of tying this back to you. You talked about you know game creation. You talked about you know, and you you and your studio committed to creating you know experiences you know, in the real world. And and it, as you were speaking there about you know watching the bartender you know sort of like carefully craft something you know for you or you're watching the chef the great chef sort of prepare you know this meal that that you know again like there's the, there's the pride and the craftsmanship of the creator the individual sort of you know as part of that but then there's on the flip side this pleasure you know and and I know the delight's been thrown a lot, around a lot in the sort of like you know UX UI experiential sort of world but you know, like on the flip side of that transaction is pleasure, you know. And if we're not experiencing delight or pleasure, you know, in the thing that we're doing, then what is its meaning, right? Like, what is ultimately then is its meaning if we're not able to derive that from the thing that the great craftsman is sort of creating? Most I totally, I totally agree. I mean, we we like we have play, playfulness, and happiness at the core. At the it, literally the core of the studio, which doesn't mean we're we're like. Of course, we have uh, our our days where we're not feeling good. Uh, we actually I always tell people, hey, if you don't feel good, you know, just throw in a don't feel good card. You know, don't force yourself to work. We have the privilege of of, of doing this. Uh, you know, don't force yourself to work. So we definitely, we have our, our our days when we're not happy, and not everything is fun. But on the on the on the flip side, like appreciating playfulness, like like. It always seems if you're an adult, it's like you're you're, you're forced to like, uh, you know, be a, be an adult. You know, like what does it mean? Um, like what does it mean? It's like yes, paying taxes, okay, go making your own money, okay, yes, but but does it mean that you cannot be you know happy and and and, and playful? Um, I, I don't think that means that you know. It also doesn't mean if you're happy and playful, you're unprofessional. Like I think we're super professional. Yeah. We're like we we you know we do our projects, we get them nailed. We're like you know putting out high quality. It doesn't mean we cannot be playful and happy at the same time. It's not a it's not a it's not an either or. It's not an either or a, a scenario. That uh, if you're if you're having fun and you're still creating awesome work and maybe. Mm -hmm. Even the clients and us are having fun while doing it. There's always a little bit of crunch time, as I just mentioned. Like every project that you need mm -hmm. to like, you know, you need, you need to put in the work, but it, you know, it can be, it can, it can be fun as well. I think it needs to be fun as well. Um, I agree. I always do my best work when I'm having fun, you know, when I'm enjoying and getting delight and pleasure, you know, out of those discoveries, mm -hmm. you know, out of that experimentation, you know, out of that prototyping and, you know, the discovery element of design was ultimately the thing I think that, that, that got me into this gig in the first place, right? Um, yeah, and I, really, really great words there, Flo. Um, so I have, you know, as we're wrapping up here, I always like to, to ask people, um, 
like what is what is keeping you inspired again i love to give you know people recommendations of you know i mentioned the book that i'm reading and like i derive a lot of pleasure and insight from from you know reading just in general so i always like to hear from uh, from the talented people i speak with like what what's keeping you going you know as a creative what's keeping you inspired or keeping you feeling you know uh you know, challenged you know um like what are some of those things that, that you turn to you know um to keep you uh to keep you keep you up yeah i mean there's always like the the traditional the traditional stuff you do around the work about the work area uh, honestly um i think my my number one thing is probably completely unplugging and uh having like i grew up in in southeast asia as i mentioned uh, my wife grew up in in africa and like going to places which are completely completely off off the grid and uh like realizing um like what like how privileged we are you know and like sometimes actually like mm -hmm. switching off and then like okay wow we're out of here uh you know coming down for a bit and then maybe new ideas or new things uh, um pop up in your mind as well and so it's like the i would like to say the the absolute the absolute uh plug out is actually i think my i honestly i don't do it do it too often um but yeah. this is this is the thing where i know this is like this is like where i power up this is like where i get new ideas so it's actually we're not looking for new ideas but like completely completely turning off um then after a few days this is where usually this is where usually this 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 little head goes goes into full full action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great reminder. I think yeah, we all don't do that enough. Um, we're so sort of tapped in and sort of like you know connected all the time, and uh, yeah, like what is the, what is the impact on us as creatives in 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 being that way all the time? So I'm definitely going to try and take a page out of your book. I'm going to Joshua Tree uh, National Park in the in the Southern California next week, and we're just going to be out there, and it's going to be you know the desert sky no lights, you know, really just sort of unplugged from it all. So definitely looking forward to taking a page out of your book on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, it's such a such a pleasure, Flo, to be able to speak with you today. Um, I hope everybody there in the chat who's with us, you know, got something you know, interesting, you know, out of it. Um, you know, if you all, you know, you all should hit us up, you know, whether on LinkedIn or kind of out there in the socials, if you, you know, have any thoughts to share, we'd love to hear it. Um, and, you know, uh, Flo, I hope to, uh, I could think of nothing better than talking, and you know, this is something that gets, that keeps me sort of creatively charged is talking to, you know, a talented and insightful person like yourself. And I, I hope that, uh, you know, maybe one day I can be there in Barcelona, you know, sharing, yes, uh, come, sharing a come meal out there. What a place to, I know I love that place. I, I, I dream about going back and, and eating with friends. You have a, so, an, an, uh, open, an open invitation <laughs> just uh, to pull you away. That's would awesome. love it. Would love it. Great. Thanks so much, Flo, for your time today. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thank you both, Talon and Flo. Um, really, really great conversation. The chat was a little quiet, but maybe people were just extra engaged. You never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so sorry, we didn't have any questions uh, to surface up for you, but we will let you know if any roll in. Um, I loved the reminders of like keeping the importance of playfulness and the, the fact that you can still be playful and professional at the same time. I think that's a really, really great reminder for all adults and anyone um, working in the professional field today. So thank you for that so much. Um, yeah. And um, so for anybody Thanks. who watches regularly, we'll be back again uh, March 28th, uh, same time, same place. And uh, we hope to see you there. And yeah, thanks for joining us today.